Hello, my name is Gabe with MicaSense. Today what I'd like to do is take you through a quick tour of Pix4D fields and how it is that we use it to process MicaSense sensor data. It's a fairly simple process, but before we begin, I just want to clarify that Pix4D fields is a very simple photogrammetry software app that's designed for precision agriculture and crop analysis. It's going to be a little bit limited in processing functions, but the trade-off is that it is the easiest app that we have found so far to process images very quickly. So let's get started. When you click New Project, you'll see on the left-hand side here that the first action that you can take is to import your images. We recommend using the Import Folder function so that you can import all of the images that you've collected at once. Note that if you have the dual camera system, you'll want to put all of the images from either camera into a single folder so that you can import them with a single click of a button. So let's go ahead and choose a, um, a data set for us to import. In my case, it's this one called 0000 set. So it's going to scan the files for the image metadata, so that way it'll tell you a preview of how much data you're actually importing, how many images in total, etc. And you'll see the processing options panel here for a few options before it begins processing. The rig relative calibration is something we do recommend turning it on. Uh, it is going to give you slightly more accurate calibrations but it is going to take a little bit longer to process. So that's a bit of a trade-off, but we do recommend switching it on because in general, pix fields is pretty fast with processing your data anyway. Radiometric correction is of course something we always recommend turning on. And this is basically going to be using a combination of your calibrated reflectance panel images that you've included in your data set, as well as the light sensor data that is from the DLS2 that is connected to your camera. You'd have the options to choose overcast and clear sky uh, on some occasions. Others, it might actually already know the weather, so it won't have the ability to choose an option here. Now, for limit orthomosaic size, this is a completely uh, a complete preference. Normally, we recommend unchecking both options so that you get the maximum quality that your data can generate. But for the purposes of this demo, what I'll do is I'll just limit the orthomosaic size to just 10 megapixels just so that we have a bit of a, quick, a quicker processing period. So I'll go ahead and click apply. And now I'm ready to process. I could add more images if I wanted to. But for now, I have all of my images imported here and I can hit start processing to begin the processing workflow. Now that it's begun processing, what you'll notice is that it's going to show previews of the images that were captured from the camera and a progress bar on the bottom here showing you how far it is in the entire process. Generally speaking, this is entirely dependent on how large your data set is and your processing options. This particular data set has about 1,600 images and in general, it'll take less than 10 minutes to process, which is really great. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up this video and I will see you at the end of the processing workflow. All right, welcome back. Now that we have finished processing our orthomosaic, you can see here a much higher quality version of this farm that we had previewed of uh, the satellite imagery from before. So now that we have this orthomosaic here, you'll see the list of layers on the left here. Right now we have the orthomosaic selected. If I unselect it, you see this satellite view. And if I click surface model, I see the digital surface model that was generated. It's not very useful in this case because it's not a very hilly, it's very flat. Um, now what we can do here 
is beyond zooming into the ortho mosaic here, what we can do is generate some agricultural indices. Uh, some of the very useful indices available are, for example, NDVI and NDRE. And given that this is an Altum camera that contains a thermal imager, let's go ahead and select thermal as well and hit generate. This will just take a few seconds. And now you can see that we have these new layers available to choose from. We can zoom in a little bit here so that we can see the difference between NDRE, NDVI, and thermal imagery. Keep in mind that once you selected your layer on the left, you can go here to the right to um, change the histograms, min and max values, and change what happens when you see a values out of range. You can change it from transparent to solid so that you don't seem like it, there's holes in your data. Uh, but you can also just change the values from the minimum to the maximum over here so that we can just kind of uh, keep it so that there are less things in the transparent or non-data uh, value area. Now, once you've played enough with your data, you can then export this to uh, actual files so that you don't have to open PIX4D uh, fields every time you want to analyze. You can use this to open these files in a GIS application, such as QGIS. And there you can further visualize and analyze your data. So let's go to export here, and you can see the various exporting options. The main thing that you'd probably want to do is export your layers, and you can choose however layers, wh whichever layers you'd like, and then click export. This will uh, export them to the selected folder in your computer. You can also export some other things such as your statistics, a PDF report designed by Pix4D, uh, your actual project so that you can load this into another computer that may have Pix4D software, or even the log files in case there was anything that happened in your processing workflow that didn't go quite right and PIX4D needs to be alerted of this. So when you contact PIX4D support, they're going to very likely ask for these log files. Now, given that we have uh, these layers selected and exported, you can then continue. Uh, you'll find it here in the project dashboard, but you can also open those files that you've exported in a another application such as QGIS for further analysis as I mentioned um, but that is really all there is to it so it really took this large field about 10 minutes to process give or take and if you have a much larger field uh, it will end up being a little bit longer to process but given that you will likely have a desktop computer to process images I was just using a laptop here, so you can tell that there is going to be a bit of a faster processing period for you if you have a stronger computer and you are limiting your processing options if speed is your goal. In any case, that's all we have for you today. If you have any questions, concerns, please feel free to contact support at micasense.com. Or if you have any questions or concerns regarding Pix4D fields, the software application in particular, you'll probably want to contact Pix4D support directly. If you need anything else, please let us know. Have a great day.